Yeah, so the big news, obviously, for investors is the fact, and, and for the economy in general, is the fact that Ukraine uh, reached an agreement uh, with the International Monetary Fund, uh, which will be a new standby agreement. Uh, this comes as a successor to the uh, the agreement reached in 2015, which was a $40 billion bailout, uh, a, a large bailout for Ukraine. Uh, that was critical uh, for Ukraine at the time because due to the war, due to the fact that Yanukovych looted the country, uh, that economic lifeline from the IMF was, was just essential. Now, uh, during that time, though, uh, the IMF is not a charity. It is a, it, it's an international monetary fund. It's a bank. So uh, there's certain conditions that have to be met. And Ukraine under the previous government was working towards meeting a number of those conditions, including, you know, anti-corruption legislation, institutions that had to be established, uh, and so forth. Uh, in some areas, they did a good job. Uh, other areas, they, they didn't do that great of a job. Uh, this new agreement, uh, it's going to be a, uh, uh, will take effect early next year. Uh, and this would help Ukraine uh, continue to get back on its feet economically. Uh, so that's that's a very positive sign uh, because that means uh, when there's an IMF agreement, that means the country is is basically moving forward uh, with you know international financial institutions and it, it also includes de facto the support of another you know a number of Western countries, Canada, US, Great Britain and so forth. So that's the good news for Ukraine. Uh, going into 2020. Uh, the economy is still growing. It actually grew a little more than expected this last year. Uh, the, the forecast was closer to 3 or 2.8. It, it's going to come in around 3.3, it looks like. So expectations were exceeded, uh, and that, can, that came in spite of two elections. You know, the markets normally don't like change, and there was a huge amount of political change in Ukraine this year. So uh, those indicators are good. Uh, on the, you know, Ukraine's uh, currency reserves are, are around 20 billion right now, which is also very positive. The, the grivna uh, strengthened earlier in the year. It was around 28 to the dollar. Now it's closer to 23. So uh, financially, you know, Ukraine, uh, the, the fundamentals are, are good. I think that's in, in due large part to uh, the Minister of Finance and the team at the National Bank. Um, They've uh, had a difficult year uh, because Mr. Kolomoisky, uh, the oligarch, he obviously has uh, made things difficult for the NBU. Uh, but what they've managed to do is to keep their independence. So as long as the National Bank of Ukraine remains independent, that bodes well for financial markets. That bodes well for the IMF. Uh, and so all those things are good for Ukraine's long-term financial health. On the investment side, uh, you know, Ukraine's foreign investment this year is going to be up. That's largely due to a favorable green energy tariff. Uh, so tariffs have been high for green energy, and the idea was twofold. One, to jumpstart the economy, and, then, and these, these tariffs took effect a few years ago. But the idea was to attract foreign investment. So you have the Norwegians coming in with 300 million of um, you know, wind, uh, you have a, a Calgary-based company, TIU Canada, that's invested in solar throughout the south of the country. Uh, there's uh, a number of other uh, countries and, and companies that have come in to invest in green energy. And the advantage, not only the, the obvious environmental advantage, uh, but it also for Ukraine, it's very important because historically half the electricity output came from nuclear sources and the other half from coal. Now, because of Chernobyl and uh, the recent miniseries that was popularized. Uh, nobody's, you know, uh, been excited about doing more nuclear energy in Ukraine. Uh, on the coal side, uh, not only is it dirty and the mines are a lot of times unsafe, uh, but now a number of those mines are actually in the occupied territories. So uh, reliance on coal is no longer as feasible as it once was. Ukraine's been having to buy coal from, from the U.S., from South Africa, from Australia and other countries, and which is very expensive. So uh, green energy makes sense in a lot of a lot of ways, and that's why Ukraine is trying to move to 11% dependence on green energy by next year. Right now, they're at about four and a half, uh, but that's going to dramatically increase uh, because uh, January one, uh, a lower tariff goes into effect for investments. So that will obviously you'll see a decline in in investments in green energy, but there will be in other spheres. So uh, for the moment, things look positive. Um, 
you know, the fundamentals are good, uh, but it needs to be more. Ukraine's had about a 3% GDP growth, uh, but to get to the levels where they need to be to raise a standard of living for average Ukrainians, uh, they need to have closer to five to seven. And unfortunately, that's not in the forecast right now. In terms of rhetoric, the Zelensky government's been good in saying all the right things to foreign investors. Zelensky came uh, one of his first trips to Toronto to the reforms conference back in July, uh, met with uh, Canadian business, uh, said all the right things. Uh, so that, that was positive. Um, the new government's having difficulty uh, learning how to manage the, uh, how to say, the, the, the beast of government and, and getting it to work effectively. Um, but uh, they seem to be getting their people in place um, and, um, you know, making some positive, uh, you know, positive motions. We'll see if those motions turn into, into actions and, and concrete results. Uh, but um, one thing that has been a concern actually is, uh, you know, is making sure that there's a stable uh, investment field. You know, foreign investment likes stability. And uh, you may have a great tariff, like, for example, in green energy, great tariff. Uh, but if you're going to make changes in the tariff, then you need to uh, let the public know about them ahead of time so that it, there, there are no surprises. Uh, one of the bills that was uh, currently being debated in Parliament would actually retroactively uh, reduce tariffs, uh, which in, you know, would be horrible for foreign investors. You know, you can't change the rules mid-game. So doing anything like that that would, uh, you know, change the rules of the game midstream, uh, obviously be devastating for foreign investment. Uh, so that would be the thing that uh, the new government really needs to do is just to reassure markets that, you know, even if the promise was made under a previous government, that the rules are going to stay the same, the playing field is going to be balanced. I'll give Zelensky credit in that he has uh, been talking a lot with foreign business and saying, you know, come invest in Ukraine, we'll protect your business. Historically, you know, foreign investment uh, has been slow to come to Ukraine because, uh, unfortunately, foreign companies often get raided. Uh, they, uh, and uh, so that's been a problem. And that's hopefully something that this new government will um, make a thing of the past. The biggest worry right now is that uh, this impeachment scandal uh, will drive a wedge in the bipartisan consensus that is out there uh, on, on both sides of the aisle in the U.S. in support of Ukraine. They had you know, uh, there's there's the question, uh, you know, military aid is obviously, uh, you know, continues from the U.S. side. Obviously, Canada is a great part of that, too. Uh, but uh, the, the current scandal does threaten to uh, drive a wedge uh, into the support that Ukraine has on both sides of the aisle. Ukraine has gotten easier to do business in, um, and it's everything from being able to get a, a, a residence permit as a foreigner, that's gotten much easier. Um, you know, the Zelensky government wants to, as you say, put government on a smartphone. And so uh, they're moving towards, uh, you know, e-systems e uh, and, and just to generally make things a much easier, much less bureaucratic. I mean, as you know, Ukraine historically was horrifically uh, bureaucratic because the bureaucracy had not uh, evolved over over during the Soviet time. So uh, a lot of that's a thing of the past though. Um, you know, now in Kyiv you have the, uh, you know, these one-stop shops where you can get your permits, uh, you get your registration, all that stuff has become much, much easier. A lot of these applications you can do online. Uh, the previous government was very good, especially in e-health, uh, making strides in e-health and, and making it easier to set appointments with doctors, uh, you know, order your prescriptions, all those kind of things online. I mean, these are things that in North America we kind of take for granted, but in Ukraine that's a big deal because otherwise you're you're going across town, you're standing in lines, you're you're getting stamps and signatures. You know, it's just so those are those are all positive changes that will continue, and I believe continue to get better. Uh, there seems to be an interest in improving the infrastructure of the country, so you know, Ukraine's. Uh, Roads obviously need to be improved, but uh, and that that but that also will drive tourism. So, um, you know, there's there's some positive things going on. Ukraine, uh, in a roundabout way, uh, you know, in spite of this impeachment thing, um, it, it does bring people get people interested in Ukraine, and it does bring tourists and, and tourist dollars. You got low cost airlines in Ukraine now. That's a big positive. 
Uh, you know, you can fly to Odessa cheaper than uh, to drive. Uh, and that's, those are great things. So um, Ukraine, for someone who's been here 20 years, this has gotten much, much easier to live here uh, than it was in 99 or, or 2004 or even 2010. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, European uh, business here, a lot from Scandinavia as well. Uh, the French have a presence, the, the British and others. Um, I mean, so Ukraine is quite cosmopolitan in that regard. Um, again, uh, for foreign companies, they still have to be careful on how they come in. Uh, there's, you know, there's some currency restrictions. There's labor laws which need to be modernized. Um, you know, so there's it's still not perfect by any means, but it is getting better. And so as they, that happens. It's usually Central and Eastern Europeans that who are geographically closer, who are the, fa the first to take advantage of it, whether that's Poles or Czechs and so forth. Great. Always a pleasure. Have, have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks, William. Bye-bye.